Um, so before I get started, let me say a quick word about me, is that, as Jim said, I was 27 years at Ford Motor Company. I had 18 jobs in 27 years. Uh, I was a director at Ford Credit. I was the national incentives manager for Ford. I uh, ran a couple different regions. I launched the first Navigator as a brand manager for Lincoln, the first MKZ. Um, ran all the FCSD, or parts and service division at Ford. And then ultimately became uh, general manager for Lincoln Mercury. And then also did the shortest stint in history as a general manager of Buick uh, GMC, um, and before I went to Trilogy, where I am today as the president. And I would say that during my time with Ford, I mean, I started in the Southeast calling on dealers. And I learned the automotive business, and I learned about business in general, talking to dealers one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, so I developed a very strong affinity and fondness for the dealer body. And uh, it was some time back then that I was also, I was a market rep manager, responsible for putting dealers in. And that's the first time I met Jim Ziegler. We had a dealer that was floundering, and we called Jim in to see if he could help out. And so I will never forget the day. It was the most indelible impressions. Over 27 years, it, you know, it takes a lot to mark something that stays in your memory over all, the, all this time. And Jim was, uh, had come to the dealership in Jessup, Georgia, tiny store where we were selling nothing. Everybody was completely demoralized. Uh, there was no excitement. Uh, nothing was happening. And we were sitting in the front office of this dealership with the dealer, the sales manager, a couple others. And Jim starts this speech about believing yourself and in confidence. It's raining outside. I don't have any idea where he's going with this thing. And I'm still trying to really figure him out myself. And there's nobody in the lot. Finally, he says, you got to believe yourself. He says, in fact, I'm going to sell a car right now. He gets up, and I'm not believing this, runs over. He grabs an umbrella. Jim tromps out the door. OK, big, big guy, a lot bigger back then. OK, he walks past the window. He's headed out to the front street where there's, where there's, where there's the stoplight. And there is a truck sitting at a red light outside the dealership. Nobody in the lot. Nobody to see. And I'm thinking, this is going to be comical. He knocks on the window. The window goes down. And this is not exaggerated. <laughs> There's no hyperbole in this story, no folklore. This is factually as it occurred 20-some years ago today. <laughs> but anyway, the guy rolls down the window. And uh, Jim starts conversing with him. Well, I'm still waiting for the, you know, for, 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 the, for, the, for, for the humor of the whole situation. But the light turns green, and the truck doesn't move. The conversation continues. And finally, the light turns red again. And Jim is still going back and forth. You can see this is going on. The dealer by now, the sales manager, we all got our nose presses up against the window. What's going on? Light, the light turns green. Truck goes in an intersection, makes a U-turn, pulls into the used car lot, and parks. Jim doesn't even look at us. Walks by, big guy, got an umbrella, marches over the used car operation. Next thing you know, the guy goes inside the store, inside this used vehicle lot, and it's next to the dealership with him. 30 minutes later, Jim comes out, gets a set of keys, test drives a new F-150, comes back about 10 minutes later, contracts the guy, deal washes out for about four grand in profit, okay, having nobody in the lot, somebody who's sitting in front of the dealership, and that's the day I became a believer. And so, uh, I mean, true story, no, no exaggeration at all, and so, more than two decades later, I found myself in a situation again where I thought there were some things going on in the industry and the dealers were struggling with some stuff that I wanted and I, and I reached out for him for assistance. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. And really, in all honesty, I've never taken this message public. Remember, I'm an OEM guy and that's my mold. I've been president of Trilogy for the last four years and I'll say more about us in a second. But at the end of the day, um, because of my passion for the dealer network and things I've learned, I want to bring them up front and center with you guys. And I'm really testing to see how you react to my message in terms of what we do with it going forward. Um, and I think it'll also add some things that I value for you at your stores. In fact, I'm certain of it. 